السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد يكون إن شاء الله الأصول الثلاثة the three fundamental fundamental the three principles by Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab رحمه الله تعالى the mission I think the last حلقة the تفسير of يا أيها المدثر عليكم السلام the تفسير of the first few آيات of سورة المدثر then the Sheikh said والهجرة he said والهجرة what is the meaning of الهجرة يعني uh, after the Isra al-Mi'raj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to migrate from Mecca to Medina. From Mecca to Medina. Okay. And before that, there was hijrah from Mecca to Al-Habasha. Al-Habasha, place in uh, Africa, east uh, of Africa. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not go there. But some of the Muslims, not all of the Muslims. And why? Because the situation was difficult in Mecca for the Muslims to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to practice Islam. And then the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Muslims moved to Medina. Okay. But the Prophet sallallahu was not at the beginning. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the order specifically to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left Mecca to Medina with Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala yani, uh, it is famous in the seerah that Abu Bakr was trying to migrate because this is a worship the order came to the Muslims you should migrate from Mecca to Medina al-hijrah min Mecca to Medina this is a worship and this is a must khalas if you can you should do it and the Prophet was telling Abu Bakr wait 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 until the order came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he went with Abu Bakr. Tayyib and the famous story that uh, the kuffar followed him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with Abu Bakr uh, went inside Ghar, Ghar Thawr. Ghar Thawr. Tayyib, there are uh, two Ghar. Ghar cave. Then is Ghar Hira. Ghar Hira, this is before the revelation. Uh, where? In, uh, in Jabal al Nur, mountain of Nur. And in Hijrah, in migration, uh, Ghar Thawr. Ghar, the, the, the cave called Thawr. And there is famous story, subhanAllah, one of the brothers mentioned to, to me this story. He said, I, I, I am explaining to my, uh, to my colleagues the non-Muslims and the students that the Prophet I said, migrated from Mecca to Medina and there was a cave and they went inside the cave, the web of the spider and the eggs of the pigeon. I told them, are telling them this is not authentic story. I told them, this is not authentic story. So there was no wind? Yes, there was no wind. So how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them? Okay? Yani, there should not be anything. Yani, it is not a must that there is something. Tayyib? Khalas. This is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alaykum salam. That uh, the cave, the door of the cave was open. There is no web, nothing, no eggs of pigeon. And Allah saved them. This is a miracle. Khalas. I can't do this, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abu Bakr, radiallahu ta'ala, said, O Rasulullah, if they look down, they are looking up. If they look down, they can't, they can't see us. Okay? So from Abu Bakr, from this sentence of Abu, statement of Abu Bakr, we understand that there was a web or no web. No. Yes, it was open. Because if there was web, the Abu Bakr, Will not say this. So from the chain, it is 
not authentic chain of that narration, and also logically, there is no web. طيب. So he went from Mecca to Medina with Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عن. So he said, what is the meaning of the Hijrah? The Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was then ordered to make Hijrah migration to Medina. And then, يعني after the Isra and Mi'raj, after the Isra and Mi'raj. We will not uh, talk about the Sarabim Raj because uh, it is known that the Prophet Sallallahu went from uh, Jibreel took the Prophet Sallallahu from Mecca to Jerusalem. Then he led the Salah in Masjid Al-Aqsa and all the Prophets behind him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it means he is the leader of the Prophets and he is the best Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he went up إِلَى السَّمَاءِ السَّابِعَةِ فَوْقَ السَّمَاءِ السَّابِعَةِ To the seventh heaven and even above the seventh heaven. Uh, and he saw the prophet, some of the prophets in every heaven. Adam, عليه السلام, عيسى, ويحيى, وزكريا, وإدريس, وهارون, وموسى, وإبراهيم. The last one, the seventh one, Ibrahim, عليه الصلاة والسلام. And... Uh, Allah told the Prophet you have to pray 50 times a day then he went down Musa told him uh, this is too much I tried with Bani Israel okay he went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah made them less so he is between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Musa والسلام, until they reached to the number five Musa told him no even five it is too much okay he said, no, I am, I, I'm, uh, I'm uh, shy to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make them less. Uh, so after Isra al-Mi'raj, Isra al-Mi'raj, exactly, Allah alam, we don't know in which year. Some scholars said it was one year before Hijrah. Uh, so other scholars said it, uh, Isra al-Mi'raj happened three years before Hijrah. <coughs> three years before Hijrah, so, but no doubt it is before Hijrah. Now that it is before the migration of Rasulullah sallallahu from Mecca to Medina. Uh, Hijrah is migration from the land of shirk to the land of Islam. Sheikh mentioned what is the definition of Hijrah? Migration from Bilad al-Shirk to Bilad al-Islam. This is one, one of the definitions. There is a general definition. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَالْمُهَاجِرْ مَنْ هَجَرَ مَا نَهَ اللَّهِ The general definition, and this is important. What is the definition of muhajir? مَنْ هَجَرَ مَا نَهَ اللَّهِ Who? The one who leaves sins. If you leave the sins, you are muhajir. If you avoid khamar, adultery, uh, backbiting, if you, if you, the Prophet sallallahu gave a general definition, muhajir man hajara ma naha Allah an. If you leave everything that Allah subhanahu wa taala forbade, then you are muhajir. This is haram. You avoid the haram, then you are muhajir. If you are avoiding everything haram. So this is the general definition. And this is very important that to know that Hijrah is not only from shirk to the la- from the land of shirk to the land of Islam. This is one kind of Hijrah. And this is important Hijrah. But the general meaning, Muhajir man hajra ma naha Allah an. Here the Sheikh mentioned, because he mentioned Mecca and Medina, so he mentioned this definition. To leave the, uh, the place of shirk to the place of iman. Makan shirk ila makal iman is to migrate, uh, migrating from the land of shirk to the land of Islam. Then he said, Hijrah is compulsory on this ummah from the land of shirk to the land of Islam. This ruling, then he said, maybe some, some people will think, okay, this is only when Makkah was 
a mushrik area. But now Makkah is Muslim, so there is no hijrah. He said, no, this ruling will remain thus until the uh, Yawm al-Qiyamah, the establishment of the hour. So the land of shirk to the land of Islam. This is a kind of hijrah. But here the Muslim, why the Muslim shift, yani migrate from Mecca to Medina? Because they reach to a level that they cannot show their Islam, they cannot practice Islam. When you go and pray in the Haram, it is allowed for every religion to do tawaf and to do umrah, hajj, to do their kinds of worships freely. But for Muslims, forbidden. Abu Bakr was praying at home. At home, he was praying. Okay? The Kufa said, no, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. You should uh, uh, leave Mecca. خلاص. You are not allowed to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way. The Prophet was praying in the Haram, in the Mecca. And they came and they put something on his back, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while doing sujood. And they killed the father of Ammar ibn Yasir, Yasir, radiallahu ta'ala. They killed his mother, Sumayya bint Khayyat. They were punishing uh, uh, Bilal and Rabah. So it was not a place to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freely, peacefully. So sometimes we need to migrate, not to fight, not to resist. Okay, we are not ready to fight them, to resist the kuffar. Let's go from your place to another place. And subhanAllah, this is a clear example in the sunnah that many Muslims don't follow this example. The Prophet ﷺ said, he did not say no, we have to stay in Mecca and we have to fight the kuffar, we have to resist until we die or until we make it a Muslim country. He did not say this. And he can do this, والسلام, and he can tell the companions, you should fight until you become shaheed or we make Mecca a Muslim country. He did not fight. He was uh, trying da'wah 13 years in Mecca. 13 years in Mecca, but when it became dangerous for the Muslims, خلاص, I should move. I have to move. So now many people, uh, يعني, they fight. No, we should fight. We should not leave this country. Okay, خلاص, but now, you are not able to fight them. You don't have the enough power and you are not capable to fight them. You are not equal. I mean, you are not 1% of their power. So you have to find another place. You have to, to build a, another community to be strong, then you can fight. And this is, hap- this is what happened. The Prophet وسلم, migrated from Mecca to Medina, okay? After preparing Medina, the people come to Hajj every year. The non-Muslims, okay? And Medina, it was mixed. Uh, Jews and Mushriks. Also the Jews are Mushriks, but I mean worshiping idols. Okay, uh, with an Iyun. Can we call them uh, pagans? Huh? Pagans. pagans. Mixed. So the, 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 the people of Mecca, sorry, the people of Medina, of course the Jews don't come to Mecca for uh, tawaf and tayyib. Uh, but the Ansar, Al Aus al Khazraj, before the name of Al Ansar, they were called. Al-Aws al-Khazraj. And the name of Medina was? Yathrib. Yathrib. So they met the Prophet or the Prophet gave them da'wah. Okay? So few people came to, he met few people. The next year, more people. More than about 70 people. This is famous in the seerah. So he prepared. He sent Musa ibn Umair, radiyallahu ta'ala, to give da'wah there. So the place was prepared for da'wah. 
And of course, this is, uh, this is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to migrate from Mecca to Medina. So the place was prepared for the Prophet sallallahu And when he went there, they were waiting for him. So after one year, two years, three years, after eight years, he came back, back, he came back to Mecca and he made Mecca as a Muslim country. Okay, so we need wisdom. Not to shout, no, we should not leave this place. This is a Muslim country. And this, okay, Habib, but you are not ready now. What is the benefit if you die? No, we die as a shaheed. Okay, it's like, okay, you die as a shaheed, but what about the next generation? What about your children? Khalas, you lost the, the land. You lost the, the Muslims and also you lost the land. At least lose one of them now. You lose the land now. But you can make another Muslim country, another Muslim community. Tayyip, so the hijrah from uh, the shirk place to the Muslim place. Um, not, uh, the, here, if you notice, the situation was not prepared for, for the Muslims to worship Allah. But the scholars say, uh, if you are an, يعني, if a non-Muslim, embrace Islam, he's in a non-Muslim country, but he can practice Islam. It's okay for him to, to take off during Jum'ah day. He can pray Jum'ah. He can pray the five prayers on time. His wife can wear the hijab, the niqab, okay? Then they say it is not wajib to, uh, to migrate. It is not wajib. But know that it's better to move to a Muslim country, <coughs> okay? Uh, but if he is in a place, he cannot pray al Jum'ah. His wife cannot work without, with hijab. They force uh, his wife or his daughter to, to remove the hijab, the, the schools. Uh, يعني, mixed school and they teach dangerous things. We tell him, you should not live in this place anymore. You have to move. You have to move. You have to make hijrah. Uh, some people think that if I, if I intend to migrate from a, a non-Muslim country to a Muslim country, I cannot visit my, my place. يعني, many Muslims, now their, their parents and their family, not Muslims. And they are in a non-Muslim country. He's not visiting, the, visiting them. No, you can't visit them. Okay, yeah, for example, Sri Lanka Muslim country or not? It is not. Okay, he is Muslim. He lives in a, 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 a Muslim country. His parents, his uncles, his aunts, non-Muslims. And they are in a non-Muslim country. I, not, I don't visit them, no, go and visit them. Or maybe sometimes they are Muslims, but they don't have the chance. Okay, so go and visit them. Go and visit them. Some people tell yani, I hear this from, from, some, from some brothers. No, no, I, I, I cannot, because I intend the hijrah, I should not go back to the place, that place. Okay, you will not go there and you stay there forever. You will visit your family. One week, two weeks, something like your parents there. Okay, sometimes it is your duty to give the da'wah there. Because you know the, uh, their language. Who, who will give them the da'wah if you are not uh, going there? Maybe you need to go there and you, li you live there. To build a school, to build, a, uh, yani to make shops for the Muslims, uh, halal food. You should do with this. So uh, many times misconception from some people that uh, I cannot go back to the, that, that country. Why? Because there is hadith that the Prophet ﷺ told the companions that when they did Umrah, only, you have only three days, not more than three days. Okay? Uh, some scholars mention this is only for the companions who migrated from Mecca to Medina. It is not allowed for them to, to cancel their hijrah. If you are a companion, then we tell you, خلاص, don't leave Medina. Stay in Medina. Don't go, don't go back to Mecca. Even, even if you are original from Mecca. Okay, but now, after the eighth year, Mecca is a Muslim country. Medina is a Muslim country. خلاص, 
You can't live in Mecca or Medina. And some of the companions left Medina. You know, they, they, they went, yeah, for example, uh, Amr al-As, he died where? Not in, in Medina. Ali ibn Abi Talib, not in Medina. Not Allah Ta'ala. The Khilafah shifted from Medina to Iraq at the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu ta'ala. So he did not say, no, khalas, I, I migrated from Mecca to Medina, so I should live in Medina. He did not say this. Tayyip. So then he said, it is compulsory. It is compulsory for those who cannot worship Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, can, who cannot practice Islam. He said compulsory. This ruling will, uh, and what is the proof? He said the proof is the saying of, the, of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَفَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ ظالمي أنفسهم قالوا فيما كنتم قالوا كنا مستضعفين في الأرض قالوا ألم تكن أرض الله واسعة فتهاجر فيها فأولئك مأواهم جهنم وساءت مصيرة Those people who the angels take while they are wronging themselves the angels say in what condition were you they will reply we were weak and oppressed on earth the angels will say was not the earth of Allah special enough for you to immigrate there and we cannot practice Islam okay why do not migrate so they were punished or they will be punished by the angels because they did not migrate wallah we are miskeen we cannot show we cannot practice Islam so you, you can understand from this ayah that if you can practice Islam then migration is not compulsory but don't say, okay, why you are not wearing hijab? Wallahi, I cannot. I cannot wear hijab. Why you cannot grow your beard? No, no, this is forbidden. I will be in the jail. Okay, if you cannot practice, why you are not migrating? He's silent. Wallahi, good salary here. Ah, because of dunya? It is haram. It is haram. Tayyip? There is cappuccino. If you like to drink cappuccino, who are sleepy. <laughs> but there is an exception. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, such men will find their, their abode in hell. What an evil destination. Except the weak ones among men, women, and children who cannot uh, devise a plan. Don't think that everyone can, can migrate. Yani, we should not blame everyone. We blame the one who can, but he doesn't want. But there are many Muslims. There are many Muslims. In Europe, in India, in Sri Lanka, in Africa, they like to live in a Muslim, in a Muslim country, but they cannot. Yani, especially now, it is not easy. The visa, the salary, okay, maybe I can migrate, but I cannot take my family with me. Okay? Maybe, I, okay, I can find a job, but this job is enough for me. Maybe the salary is enough for one person, but what about, about my family? I have a wife and I have five, six children. Okay? So, those who have an excuse, Allah will not punish them. Allah will not punish them. Okay? Because maybe... Uh, Okay, for a man, okay, I'm a man, and I am single. I, 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 I say the shahada. Okay, I cannot practice Islam in my country, but I can't travel. Khalas, you travel. Later, your sister became a Muslim, but she cannot travel. She cannot migrate. She's not sinner. She's not sinner. Even she cannot, yani some Muslims, okay, did not tell their families that we are Muslims. Why? Because they don't know what will happen. They don't know what happen. What will happen? Maybe the, the parents will punish the, punish them. They, maybe they will kill them. They don't know. They do, they don't know what will happen. They cannot expect what will happen. It will be okay or not. But yeah, I mean, we should be careful because some people are very sensitive, oversensitive. Okay. Why you are not wearing hijab, we tell the sister? Or why you are not joining us in Jum'a Salah? We tell the brother, why you are not? Oh, no, I don't want my family to know. Okay. 
what will happen? I remember when one brother, uh, he's in Germany. He's, not, he's Iraqi. Now in Germany, he was in Kuwait, but you know, they try to get any yani, passport, something like this, with his wife. So he sent me a question uh, last year. He said, there is uh, our neighbor, yani, good people, and uh, alhamdulillah, she accepted Islam. But she did not tell her parents. And uh, I think I mentioned this last year. And her parents drink khamr a lot. They are old people, but they like to drink khamr. Okay. This is common in Germany. People like to drink, like uh, Ireland. <coughs> I, I, I hear the worst country is Ireland, huh? huh? The consumption of alcohol is too much, huh? Okay, Allah yadim, subhanallah. So, uh, يعني, he told me that she's complaining that my parents love alcohol. And when they visit, I, I serve them alcohol. I, يعني, I serve them khamar. And if I don't serve them, they will bring the khamar with them. Okay, so now I told him, okay, what is, I'm contacting my friend. What is the problem if she tells them I'm a Muslim? Oh, she doesn't want to tell them I'm, okay, what will happen? So subhanAllah, sometimes the shaitan leads the person. No, don't tell your uh, parents. Okay, tell them I'm Muslim. You don't know, maybe if you tell them I'm a Muslim, they will become Muslim. Or at, يعني, at least they will respect you. Ah, you are Muslim, خلاص, so you will not drink. At least they, they, they will not drink in front of you. But now the problem, you are not telling them you, you, that you are a Muslim. So every time they visit, they bring khamr. Or you are buying the khamr for them. And this is haram. This is a clear forbidden. You buy the khamr and you serve your parents you should give them Islam, not Khamar. Right? So I mean, subhanAllah, the, the, the Muslims are not at the same level. Okay, and also the countries. And the families, the families, يعني, I mean, even among the Muslim families, even, even among the Muslim families, okay, sometimes, subhanAllah, you are, maybe 15 years old, 16 years old. All of you Muslims, you, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, you are a Muslim family. But they are not practicing Islam in, religiously. Yani. They are not following the Sunnah. The, Alhamdulillah, they pray, they fast, they give zakah, but they are not religious. So you start to become religious. You start growing your beard. You start your thobe, your trousers above the ankles. You start to attend halqa. So your family start to fight you. This happens, sir. Huh? Many times. Many times. You know, are you ISIS? Huh? Are you Bin Laden? Are you Khawarij? Okay, okay well now what is the relation? I, I'm growing my beard like the Prophet Sallallahu Now, alhamdulillah, I'm starting reading Quran. So, your, the, the first enemy is your family. They are Muslims, they are, not, they are not Kafir, they are Muslims. But they are not helping you to practice Islam. Okay, so SubhanAllah, even, even among the Muslim families. And Alhamdulillah, many times the opposite. When you start growing beard, you start to pray in the masjid, your parents become very happy. Very happy. Mashallah, Alhamdulillah, now you are calm. Okay, you are good boy. MashaAllah, praying in the masjid, going to the masjid on time. You are not, uh, I mean, your teachers not complaining. Alhamdulillah. And I, I heard some, uh, when I went to England, they, the, yani the, 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 the government there, they like some, uh, the, the Muslim community. Why? Because when the non-Muslims become Muslims, they calm down. Is it correct there? Huh? Maybe in, in some places, because in other places they create problems. Okay? Because yes, subhanAllah, 
Why people do the wrong things? Because they don't have goals. But for, for the Muslim, it is clear. My goal is the Jannah, the paradise. Khalas, my goal is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I worship Allah, I will be in the paradise. I am poor, I am rich, this is not important. But I have to worship Allah. But for the non-Muslims, what is their goal? They don't know. They don't know. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ulaika kalan'am, they are like the cattle, animals. It means they don't have goal. Eat, drink, sleep. Sleep. So, and subhanAllah, some Muslims like the kuffar. Some of the, some of the Muslims like the kuffar. What is my goal in this dunya? If you ask them, why you are here in this dunya? They don't know. But for the, the Muslims who, who have the basics, Abdullah is very simple. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لَيَعْبُدُونَ I am in this dunya to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I worship Allah, the end will be in the paradise. If I disobey Allah, the end will be in the hellfire. As simple as that. So, you, uh, يعني, everything is clear for you. Everything is clear for you. I know this is a big issue, the, the, the hijrah, it is not easy. Uh, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, all my slaves who believe, verily my earth is precious to, so worship me. If you cannot worship Allah in this place, migrate to another place. Okay, so this is the concept. Al-Baghawi, one of the scholars, he have a famous book in Tafsir, Rahimullah. This ayah was revealed regarding the Muslims in Mecca that didn't migrate. Allah has called them the believers. Yani for example, if there is a Muslim in a non-Muslim country, he cannot practice Islam and he did not migrate. He is a Muslim or Kafir now? He is a Muslim. He is disobeying Allah, but still he is a Muslim. We, can, we cannot say, khalas, because you are among the Kuffar, you are Kafir. No. But you are disobeying Allah. Why? Because you have the ability to migrate, but you did not. And what is the proof from the Sunnah? The Prophet ﷺ says, Hijrah will not cease until Tawbah ceases. And Tawbah will not cease until the sun rises from the west. So the hijrah did not stop. The, uh, why he mentioned this hadith? Because there is another hadith the Prophet ﷺ says, لا هجرة بعد الفتح. There is no hijrah after the uh, conquest, huh? conquest of Mecca. There is hadith, ﷺ says, there is no hijra, there is no migration after the conquest of Makkah. So what is the meaning of this hadith? It means there is no migration from Makkah to Medina. Yani now don't say, oh, I want to migrate from Makkah to Medina. Habibi, are you crazy? Makkah is the best place. Okay, and you can practice Islam, alhamdulillah, Masjid al-Haram. But migration was before the conquest of Makkah. So after the conquest of Mecca, there is no hijrah. طيب. Then Sheikh Muhammad Rahimullah says, when the, he settled in Medina, the reminder of the rulings of Islam were legislated upon him, such as zakah, fasting, hajj, jihad, adhan, ordering the good and the forbidding uh, evil, as well as the order uh, legislation of Islam. When he migrated from Mecca to Medina, the details of fiqh started. Yani, if you read the Quran, the Makki Surah, okay, you will not find details. Generally, you will not find the details of fiqh. For example, the, the divorce rules. In which surah? Many of them in Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah, Medani or Makki? Madani. طيب. Uh, rules of Salatul Khawf, the Salah of Fear, in Madani Surah. Okay? Uh, also, some details about the Zakah in Madani Surah, fasting Madani Surah. طيب. In the Makki Surah, you will not find the details. Yes, you'll find something general, like Waqimus Salah. 
You can find this in Makki Surah. Wa'atu zakah. Give zakah. You can find this in Makki Surah. But the details in Madani Surah. So when people went to Medina in the second year, the, uh, the fasting, the يعني يعني صلاة العيد زكاة الفطر okay many rules okay revealed in Medina because this is the time for the Muslims to to apply Islam in details and peacefully he worked on establishing this for 10 years and after that he died يعني 13 years in Medina in Mecca Emphasizing the concept of aqidah, the tawheed. Okay, al jannah wal nar, the paradise and the hell. Okay, when he went to Medina, now, khalas, the ta- he, they, they are prepared. Then he gave them the legislations jihad, marriage, divorce, salah, all the rules. How many years in Medina? Ten years. After that, he passed away, رضي, uh, صلى الله عليه uh, وسلم. Uh, but his religion remains. Okay, his, the Prophet ﷺ died, but the Islam did not die. Islam did not die. And this is uh, something said by Abu Bakr, رضي الله تعالى عن, when he passed away, صلى الله عليه وسلم, uh, Abu Bakr gave uh, a fantastic talk. He said, Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad mat. Those who worship Muhammad, so I said, Muhammad passed away. And those who worship Allah, Allah doesn't die. So Muhammad so I said, passed away, but Islam remains. He did not leave any good except he guided the ummah to it. And he left no evil. Except he warned the Ummah from. The Prophet ﷺ guided us to, to follow every good and to avoid every bad, every wrong. Alhamdulillah. Everything is clear. Okay, and you'll find in the Quran the word Mubin, Tibyan. What does it mean Mubin, Tibyan? Okay, it means clear, obvious. Nothing vague. Alhamdulillah, in Islam everything is clear. But if you compare with other religions, you'll find many, you, you have many questions. I mean, they have many questions, but they don't have the chance to ask because there is no answer. Okay. Yani, uh, some people told me that there are many questions in Christianity, but there is no answer from the, the, the uh, Shisamuna, what they call their scholars, uh, the monks and the priests. No answer. But Alhamdulillah in Islam we have answer. If even, yeah, even you can check the answer in, from the books. You can read and you find the answer. Alhamdulillah. Oh. Big questions. You are reading the book of the three fundamentals of Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, the end of the book. Some people ask him. And no one is answering him. طيب أصول الثلاثة شيخ محمد عبد الوهاب the end of the book طيب uh, the good uh, that he uh, طيب then the sheikh said the good that he has led to it uh, to is توحيد and all that Allah loves and is pleased with the evil he warned about is shirk and all that Allah hates and is not pleased with. Yani, we, we mentioned this before. What is the most important order in Islam is the Tawheed. And what is the most dangerous forbidden thing is the Shirk. We have to know this. Okay, as I mentioned previously, the Muslim, okay, the true Muslim, his way is clear. Khalas, I know what is, I know what is my goal. And also, I know how to reach to my goal as a Muslim. And the, the, the most important thing to reach to my goal is Tawheed, Iman. Okay, and the most dangerous thing that 
I should avoid is shirk. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that, that the tawheed and all the things that Allah loves, these are the things we were guided by the Prophet sallallahu to follow. Uh, Allah sent him to all mankind and he made it compulsory upon the jinn and mankind to follow him. Allah says, say, O mankind, verily I am, I am sent to you all as the messenger of Allah. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا So, those who say Muhammad Sallallahu only for the Arabs, this is wrong concept. Muhammad Sallallahu is for the Arabs and non-Arabs. Even Muhammad Sallallahu for the jinn. If you read Surah Al-Rahman, there, there is an ayah repeated many times. This ayah is, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Rabbikuma, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to two kinds, the jinn and the ins, the jinn and the human beings. So both of, uh, both, both of them, we as human beings and the jinn. Do you have jinn now? Can you see them? So why you say there are jinn? If you don't see them, why you are seeing them? It is in the Quran. It is in the Quran. And with everyone, okay, there is Qareen, there is a jinn with you, with me, with you, with everyone, with Azhar, Abu Fatma, Umar, okay. So even if you, even if you escape now, if you go home, the jinn with you. So it is not only the halqa. He is with you everywhere. Aisha said, oh Rasulullah, even with you, you have jinn also, you have qareen. Qari what does it mean qareen? Close. Close. The Prophet ﷺ said, yes, I have qareen. But Allah helped me to make him Muslim. فَلَا يَأْمُرُنِي إِلَّا بِخَيْرٍ Okay, Allah helped me to make him Muslim. Yes. Allahu <laughs> alam. And you think that your wife will inherit your jinn? <laughs> yes, he means this. <laughs> you want to send your jinn? <laughs> but make sure to make a Muslim. <laughs> so the Prophet ﷺ said, but Allah helped me to make my jinn as Muslim. He orders me to do the good. Okay, what is the proof that the Prophet ﷺ passed away? Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Verily, you will die, and verily, they too will die. So it is clear. For those people who believe that the Prophet ﷺ did not die, so what you will do with this ayah? Of course, they will change the meaning of this ayah. Okay? And they say, no, the Prophet ﷺ now is with you in the halqa, or during the maulid, he will come. And Subhanallah. No, the pro clearly and simple aqida, simple clear belief that the Prophet ﷺ passed away. When nas idamatu yubatun, when the people die, they will then be resurrected. What is the proof? Minha khalaqnaakum wa fiha nuidukum. Allah says in the Quran, from it we have created you, and in it we are going to return you. And from it, you are going to come out another time. So it is clear about this ayah about the day of resurrection. And also, قَوْلُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَاللَّهُ أَنْبَتَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ نَبَاتَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُكُمْ فِيهَا وَيُخْرِجُكُمْ إِخْرَاجًا And Allah has brought you forth from the dust of the earth. Afterwards, He will return you into it and bring you forth. وَبَعْدَ الْبَعْثِ مُحَاسَبُونَ وَمَجْزِيُونَ Okay, after res resurrection, what will happen? After the resurrection, the, pe the people are going to be asked about their deeds and made responsible for them. يعني, it is not only re resurrection and that's it. No, we will be asked. The proof, وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسَاءُوا بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا 
بالحسنة. To Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. That he may uh, requite those who do, do evil with that which they have done and reward those who do good with what is best. So we believe as Muslims in the day of res resurrection. And also we believe that after resurrection there is questions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after that to the paradise or to the hellfire will ayyadu billah. Then he said, وَمَنْ كَذَّبَ بِالْبَعْثِ kafar." The person who rejects the resurrection has disbelieved. He is kafir. Why? Because this is one of the pillars of Iman. We have to believe in the last day. And those who disbelieve in the last day say, no, no, khalas. Once we die, that's it. Nothing after death. They are not Muslims. They are kuffar. Why? Because Allah says, زَعَمَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَلَّا يُبْعَثُوا The disbelievers pretend that they will never be resurrected. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named them kuffar. Okay? So we have to believe in the day uh, of resurrection. وَأَرْسَلَ Allah جَمِيعَ الرُّسُلْ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْدِرِينَ Allah sent all the messengers as people who gave glad tidings and also warned of punishment. What is the job of the messengers? They are not gods. We should not worship the messengers, alayhim salatu wassalam. They are like us as human beings. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the message. And they have to convey the message of Allah to the people. If you do good, you'll, the glad tidings is the paradise. If you do bad, you'll be the jahannam al billah. What is the proof? Allah says, messengers as bearers of good news as well as warning in order that mankind should have no uh, plea against Allah after the messengers. <coughs> Khalas. Because the messengers, the, mess the messengers, at the day of judgment, they will tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, I convey your message to them. They are not listening. Okay? So, they are human beings, okay? And they are warning us and they are giving us the glad tidings. <laughs> then he said, the first uh, Rasul, the first messenger, was Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam. And where is Adam? He's the first prophet, not messenger. Tayyib? Tayyib? Awwal Nabi, the first prophet, Adam, alayhi salam. But the first messenger, the first Rasul, Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the last one, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, what is the proof? He said, what is the proof that Nuh is the first messenger? Verily uh, really we have inspired you as we inspired Nuh and the prophets after him. So Allah did not say Adam and the prophets after him. He said Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. All sent a messenger to every nation, from Nuh to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ordering them to worship Allah alone and forbidding them from worshiping false uh, diets. So all the prophets, all the messengers agreed upon the Tawheed. This is very important. Uh, the proof of this, why we say all of them have the same uh, job. Allah says in the Quran clearly, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَاتَّبِعُوا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهِ وَاشْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and verily we have sent to every nation, every nation, a messenger proclaiming worship Allah and abandon all taghut. All taghut. Okay, what is taghut? Allah has made it compulsory on all his worshippers that they reject the taghut, the false deities, and worship Allah. Okay. What is taghut? Ibn al-Qayyim gave an, a nice and a simple definition of the word taghut because this is mentioned in the Quran. Ibn al-Qayyim said, Rahimullah, a taghut is an object that is worshipped, followed, or obeyed, and that people exceed the limits with regards to it. There are many false deities. So 
if you exceed, it is okay to follow. It is okay to obey. But the problem when you exceed in your obedience. I have to obey my parents. Do we have to obey our wives? Yes. Okay, خلاص. But if your wife told you to do something haram, don't obey your wife. Yes. So if you obey your parents, your wife, okay, your boss, in haram things, and you believe this is halal, then this is kufr wal billah. Okay, so this is the meaning of to exceed the limit in obeying them or following them. Okay, so if you obey your, don't tell your wife you are tagut. Huh? You tell your wife because I am obeying you, so you are tagut. Can you say this? It depends. It depends. If you are obeying your wife in everything, haram and halal, then we'll consider your wife as tagut. And you are mushrik. Is it okay? Can you delete this? <laughs> so, no, subhanallah, some people, they, 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 uh, يعني, there's a famous story that subhanallah, one of them boys or one of the men, he worshipped his, uh, not his wife, his girlfriend. He made sujood for his girlfriend. He fell in prostration. This is kufr wal billah. So he exceed the limit. Okay, he exceed the limit. This is this is haram. Or to obey the leaders. Okay, yes, the Prophet ﷺ told us to obey our leaders. Listen and obey. But if our leaders told us to do something haram, don't obey them. If you obey them and they force people, they are taghut. They are taghut. Okay. So the, what is the term of taghut? Okay. He mentioned examples. Number one, Iblis. Iblis. He's the biggest taqut. Number two, he who is worshipped whilst being pleased with this. Isa is worshipped. Uzair also is worshipped. Our Prophet Muhammad is worshipped. But they are not pleased with this. Okay, because if you mention this sentence, yeah, okay, what about Isa? Isa is taqut. A'udhu billah. Isa is one of the messengers of Allah. But yes, he is worshipped, but he is not pleased with this. And at the day of judgment, he will be free from them. He will declare his freedom from them. Allah, I, he will tell Allah, oh Allah, I did not tell them to worship me. I told them what you told me. Exactly. Number three, he who calls people to worship him. Okay, so notice there is a difference between number two and number three. Number two, who are pleased. Okay, I see people worshiping me and I am happy with this. I did not reject, I did not stop them. Okay, so this person is taghut wal billah. Number three, like Fir'aun. He was calling people, worship me. You have to worship me. If you don't worship me, I kill you. And he said, أنا ربكم الأعلى فرعون I am the highest lord Number four A person who claims that he knows something from the future The fortune tellers Like the fortune tellers And, and those who are using magic Okay Also they are tahut They are kafir who claim, Those people who claim that they know the future Also they are tahut Number five, the one who rules by that which Allah has not revealed. Okay, person, the one who wrote a book, rules, and he tell people, yalla. These are the rules you have to follow, and it is better than Quran. He is taqut, the one who forced, forced people to follow his, his book. He, writes, he, he wrote a book and he forced people to write a book. This is Tawut. Okay? Why? Because we should follow the Quran and Sunnah. That's it. Our rules should be, should be from the Quran and Sunnah. We should not oppose anything from the Quran in the Quran and Sunnah. 
طيب and there are more details about this last point uh, the proof is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لا إكراه في الدين the, the ayah yes those who translate the Quran and they claim this is the best understanding or translate number one we don't we cannot translate the Quran no, the meaning, the meaning. Uh, yes yes this is the point because uh, many people say we translate the translation of the Quran there is no translation of the Quran because if there is translation of the Quran Quraysh could write something like the Quran so the translation of the meaning okay uh, it is wrong to claim wallahi I write a book and I say, this is the best understanding? This is wrong. Why? Because I am praising myself. And this is not in Islam. But you should say, yeah, and you can say, well, I tried my best. There are a lot of publications nowadays who are adopting it. Some of them in Saudi Arabia are adopting this book. I know, I know. But the, the best should say, well, I, this is, yeah, and this is common. Yeah, and maybe uh, people ask, this is normal. People ask, what is, what is the best translation? Of the meaning of the Quran, this is the best. Okay, so no problem. I should guide people according to my knowledge. Okay, but I write a book, then I say this is the best. No, this is not the way of the most the, the, the scholars. But I can say, well, I tried my best. And you can mention what are the the advantages of your book and what you avoided, yani, like this. Hmm? Inshallah. Okay, the proof, there is لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقة What is the proof about the طاغوت that we should avoid the طاغوت? There is no compulsion in religion. Really, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. Whoever disbelievers uh, disbelieves in طاغوت and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never Break. And Allah is all hearer, all knower. This is the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Then the end of the book, he narrated the hadith. Uh, the Prophet said, The head of the matter is Islam, its pillar is Salah, and the top of its speak is Jihad and the way of Allah. Allah is the one who truly has the knowledge, and may Allah. Sent his blessings on Muhammad وسلم, and his family and companions. So, this is the end of the book, Usul Thalatha, written by Sheikh Hamla Abdul Wahab, Rahimullah, yeah, and before more than 200 years. And people are teaching this book until now, and inshallah, they will continue teaching this book. Uh, and as you say, as you notice, yani, he is quoting. He's trying to quote with every sentence a verse and hadith. So those people who are claiming this is Wahhabi and he is shaitan, okay, check his book. Okay, and also subhanAllah, yani, an important point that we should do something good for our life to last after our death. Yani, imagine if you write a book or if you do something, yeah, maybe you build a school or you start a good deed and people follow you. So after your death, your hasanat will, will run, will not stop. This is what we need. Don't work only for your dunya now. Work for your akhirah. Jazakumullah khair. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.